the Renaissance Society will begin its 2006-2007 season with Avery Priestman, a Dutch painter-sculptor who is currently installing a new body of paintings and a series of site-specific sculptures in the gallery. Avery Priestman's work, although it's abstract, uh, you know, in the use of materials, and concrete, split timbers, uh, and his sense of composition, which is very geometric, uh, can't help but reference the built environment. And it's interesting, even though he's done versions of the long window piece, the sort of uh, broken set of very kind of an irrational geometry, if there is such a thing, uh, and the floor piece that looks sort of like the facade of a Tudor house, um, even though he's done those in other, other venues, it's quite nice to see how they reference or potentially reference uh, different aspects or elements of, uh, you know, that we would find around in Chicago. And that was at least my initial, uh, the appeal of the work for me on one level, kind of speaks to um, uh, not a pure formalism or a pure abstraction, uh, but the kind of abstraction that would speak to you know, our lives as they are already abstract by virtue of living in cities. So we're finishing off the installation of Avery Priestman's exhibition here at the Renaissance Society, which opens this Sunday from 4 to 7 o'clock. Um, and I was wondering, um, uh, Avery, when you first came to see the space, uh, mm -hmm. what were the things that most you, know, you were taken with the most about it? Because I think the exhibition is quite a, a grand response to, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the sort of uh, the nature of the space. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were two plans, so to say, like build walls ourselves, but then with a layer of concrete with a specific shape. Mm -hmm. um, to surface the, the walls, as yeah, I recall, yeah. we were talking right. about with concrete, to yeah. build two long uh, parallel walls, walls yeah. with an opening in, yeah. Yeah. in between. And the idea was then that when you would enter the space, you would have like in this in this small corridor, more or less, right? You would have like, it was like filled with color. And then we, I also imagined such a kind of uh, wall piece which run out the window, I discussed it with Suzanne. Also, you know, you know, I mean, she, she looked at the catalog and told me, you know, where she was interested in. And um, so more or less we decided to to have this piece running in front of the window at the north side of the gallery. Um, but then, like, so the first plan, it became too uh, dense, you know what I mean? Um, so the, the best plan, second plan, was to keep the space totally open. And try to find a way to, in a way, get this whole space spinning in a sort of way. Right? Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, like even sitting here now, I'm seeing a lot more of the color in this silver painting over here than I've ever seen, and it's relating to the split timber. Mm -hmm. I mean, the undercolor in a way mm -hmm. uh, on the floor. And I think that we were all amazed, I mean, because it wasn't, it was just really a wonderful serendipity when the timbers came and they had this amazing sort of tone, peach tone almost mm -hmm. to them. Right, and something wonderful happened with the concrete together. I mean, look at the the candles here, the the flame and the and the colors in the concrete and in the split timbers, and then your eye travels over here. You're really picking up a lot of this light. And then it, I wanted to talk go back up a, a little bit too and talk about you know again you mentioned the the fact that the gallery is facing north. And mm -hmm. I've heard you say mm -hmm. that on a number of occasions. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd be curious to know how much the piece has been oriented to the north. Mm -hmm. Want to talk yeah. a little bit well, about that? I mean, just to my, well, you know, like the north side is always this, the side which has the, you know, which has constant light. So it's. For a painter. For a painter, it is, right. Um, so it, I, I, I like the idea to think about, you know, to, em, to, to emphasize on that particular side of the gallery, right? Right. 
um, since there to me the light is coming from, right? I mean, yeah. um, so therefore I thought about a, a staccato wall piece which wasn't too dense, you know, which was more or less had a kind of open structure. Um, apparently there are uh, plenty of like triangles in that shape at the end, so if you would read it from left to right, which, mm -hmm. which I do, um, and it's also how it was made, it was made from left to right, like at the end something else happened, it's like a mirrored image of the, I mean at least to me, of the beginning, of, of the, beginning or of the whole thing yeah. in itself. These lines are more or less like holding up, uh -huh. the idea of holding up. But do those appear in every staccato uh, motif? There's always this yeah. sort of the, the right. secondary. So, yeah. I mean, that's interesting because I think in a typical framed house, you'd want the frame to hold without that. I mean, right. you'd want, this is a standard construction thing. You've got the post and then you have the thing right. coming down and this carries the weight. Right. This is like, an extra thing to hold right. it up. It's in it's in process, right? So right, I see. It's still yeah. in the in, in construction. I mean, right. The same thing is more or less happening here. You know, you you have these. I mean, it's hard to tell because, but you have these things going like there, right. and then down. Only now they are not painted solid, but they are kept open. Like these two horizontal mm -hmm. lines are painted. Mm -hmm. Solid. They are closed. You know, mm -hmm. there is paint in in them. These are just like two open lines. Mm -hmm. And this one is just so much the opposite. It's like mm -hmm. something dug up from the basement, and uh, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> it's really very material and mm -hmm. not um, elevating. Mm -hmm. But it's still. I mean, to me at least. I mean, the brackets are very heavy. Mm -hmm. Maybe even too heavy for. I mean, let's say there is the weight, which is a practical thing, and then there is just the surface of the thing. Mm -hmm. and the surface of the thing to me is more light than the heaviness of the brackets and the heaviness mm -hmm. of the actual mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. So I would have, but it wasn't, it's a practical thing. I would have preferred to have other brackets, mm. which, would, which didn't really refer to the heaviness of the thing, because uh -huh. it's not about it. Uh -huh. It's about something. It, it needs that thickness because mm -hmm. it's it's an echo which doesn't resonate further. It just resonates mm -hmm. one time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it can resonate one time, you know, in a very intense way, maybe because mm -hmm. it has that thickness. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not like a, I mean, I could have more plates mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. next to it, smaller, mm -hmm. but, uh, then it would become really uh, like a kind of illustration of. Mm -hmm you know, the thing. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to have it resonate one mm -hmm. time, but then yeah. also really... Right, stop. Yeah. So w why is this called Light for the Blind? Uh, it's like, you know, it's what you said yesterday, there, there are a lot of villains in, in one mm. way or the other. They, 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 they need to know their place. Mm. Um, that's one thing, and it's also about um, you know, these things actually, I mean, there is no light coming in from the outside or mm -hmm. whatsoever. I mean, mm -hmm. these candles really burn, right? I mean, there is really, it's actual time. Mm -hmm. And and it, you know, simply, it passes. It's um, mm -hmm. the placement of these candles, there is like a division. I mean, there are two next to each other and there is mm -hmm. something in the middle which, mm -hmm. And there is one. Mm -hmm. at, it's uh, a, a difficult uh, thing to uh, come together in a mm -hmm. way.
This program is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency.